Hello, glad that you could join us this evening. Tonight, as you can see, we are going to be painting um, an ocean picture with some seagulls. Um, of course, everybody likes the ocean. So uh, if you can't be there, at least we're gonna paint it for you. Tonight, you're gonna be using a couple different sized brushes. Again, if you'd like to paint along, you can, but otherwise, if you just want to watch the video and then go back and review the recording and paint along with the recording, you're going to use a nice big flat brush this evening, as well as a number six round, a number two round, um, a number one rigger, which is a long, thin brush and a very small zero liner. You're also going to be using table salt this evening. So you wanna have a salt shaker with you. And if you did not misc it out some of the whites of the birds to keep it nice and white, you can paint it in later with white paint. But if you do um, know what miskit is, miskit is a watercolor masking agent. Um, I use uh, the Winsor Newton brand, but there's different brands that you can use. You just want to get a masking agent for watercolor that is not permanent, okay? Um, I also order offline um, some eye um, brow brushes. They're very inexpensive. You can get like, you know, 50 for a couple dollars. And that's what I use to put my miskit on with. Never use a regular paintbrush with miskit because miskit will ruin it. This way, these are disposable. When you're finished painting with these, putting your miskit on, you can simply dispose of them. So we're gonna start out this evening um, by putting some additional color in the water besides the blue. I'm gonna do that first because I want to see where I want to put that without the blue, all of the blue confusing me. So I am going to be putting in my um, a little bit of a tannish brown color first. I'm going to wet my paper first from the top of the water line down. I'm gonna skip those big areas that are all white where you have all of the froth from the waves. I'm gonna skip that and I'm gonna wet all the way down to where that last wave rolls in. So my picture is going to be wet just in some areas, not everywhere right now. And then I'm going to be mixing a little bit of burnt umber, which is the dark brown, with a little bit of black. And where you see that brownish color in your picture is where you wanna put it. So I see it in between my two big white waves. So I'm going to put that on there. And the reason I wet my paper first was simply because I wanted to keep these lines soft. I don't want real hard lines and real hard edges. So I am just wetting my paper first for that purpose. And you can see by wetting your paper, the paint almost dissipates. Um, and moves about and softens the edges. It softens itself, which is exactly what you want it to do. I'm also gonna put up a little bit in up here in the ocean where it might be just a little bit deeper. The ocean, not the color. And when you do that, when you work when on wet, it's best to lift your paper up then and wipe off your table so that you don't get any of that wet watery color that can come back on your paper. Move your paper around so that the color blends well, and then we're gonna sit it down to dry. I always have a hair dryer handy so I can dry things quickly. So that's exactly what we're going to do, dry this nice and quick.
Now I'm gonna put my blue color on next. My blue color, I'm going to put a light wash on and I used both some indigo blue and some ultramarine blue. If there are other blues that you like that you're used to working with, you can certainly use those. But I like um, indigo, which is a nice navy blue and my ultramarine blue, which is a medium blue. I'm adding a lot of water to that because I want my initial wash to be nice and light. So I'm adding a good bit of water to that mixture. And because my sky is blue and my water is blue and the sand has a blue tint to it from both the sky and the ocean, everything but these two lines of white froth is going to be painted in with the blue. So I'm going to start at the top and I'm going around that biggest wave first. And I'm making it a nice uneven zigzagged line because that's gonna help to show that that's nice and rough. I'm going right over the brown that I already put on. And I'm going to paint that blue color all the way to the top of my paper. So this is going to be both my sky and my initial color of my water. Wiping off my table and then I'll go to this middle section. And again, I am going around real rough like with my big brush, all of this little bit of white froth and taking it up to the line of my first big wave. It doesn't have to be as sharp and zigzag lines, but you want it to not just be a straight line all the way across. So now we have two sections painted in. And the last section, because our seagulls are going to be darker than the initial blue color that I put on, I can paint right over them. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm coming down here and this is under my frothy, second frothy line. And I'm going to paint that blue all the way to the bottom. Because if you look at your picture, you see that that bottom of your picture has a nice wash of light blue on it. That is not what you are not seeing the color of the water. That is actually the reflection of the sky in the water. So that's where that blue comes in. So now my picture, I have three sections of blue and one of my white waves. Now, of course, my paper is still nice and wet and that's what I want right now because I'm going to use a smaller brush now. I'm going to use my number six round and I'm going to either use my um, ultramarine or my indigo. You can pick which blues you want. I'm going to make them a little bit more intense and I'm just going to brush those colors in through my wet paint and try to separate out a couple of my sections. So this wave I'm going to make a little bit darker just to separate out the color. And then up below my first big frothy line, I'm going to add a little bit of extra color. And now my paint, you can see, is still nice and wet. So I'm not going to be getting hard edges because as soon as it hits that nice wet water, it goes and, and softens its edge in 
the nice wetness of the rest of the paint, okay? So I wanna make sure I do that. And I'm also going to add a little bit in the ocean part, which is in the distance. Now I'm not gonna to get too close to the horizon line because my paper's wet and I don't want it to bleed up into my horizon. But I'm gonna just drag some of this darker blue through where my ocean would be. There we go. And then again, I'm gonna dry. Normally, you wouldn't have to keep drying. You could let it dry on its own. But because we have a time frame this evening, I want to go ahead and dry it for you. Now the froth in our water is not going to be left just as these white lines. We have to make them look a little bit more realistic. And in that white froth, there is some color. So I'm going to wet my froth area. That's the plain white area. I'm going to just wet that with some water. Make sure you're using clean water. And while that's nice and wet, I'm going to take my blue that I used, my indigo and my ultramarine, and I'm going to just drop in with my rigor, which is the real thin, long bristled brush, I'm going to drop in some color here and there through this wave. Not everywhere, but I want to give it some color so that it looks more realistic. The color that you're putting in could be some depth to the wave. but I'm just dropping in a little bit of color here and there with my rigor. And then I'm going to use my salt there. And I'm going to salt the areas that I just put in. And the salting is going to create a bubbly effect to that. It's going to make it look very textured. I'm gonna do the same thing, but not in such detail to this smaller white area down here. Again, I'm wetting it just with some water. And if some of your paint or your salting goes above or below your white, it's not going to matter because we're going to be making this into um, a rough wave later anyway. So I'm just adding in little bits of my blue here and there, just to break up all of that perfect white. And again, I'm gonna throw on a little bit of salt. 
Now, while we're waiting for that salting to work, we have to go up here and do something to help to separate out our ocean and our sky. So I am going to deepen the horizon line where my sky meets my water. And I'm simply using my same color, my indigo mixed with a little bit of ultramarine. Now this is the horizon line. So you wanna make sure that you get it nice and smooth. You don't want it to be all bumpy. And I don't want just a straight line like that. So I'm going to do what's called dry brushing. If you're not familiar with dry brushing, you're going to get your brush, your round brush, and you're going to hold it down on its side and you're going to drag it across your paper with a little bit of paint on it. And by dragging it, you're going to create very uneven lines. But what that will end up looking like is ripples in your water where the light is catching them. And I'm not doing that the whole way down, maybe just about to halfway to my big white wave. Lay your brush on its side and drag it across your paper. And that's going to create a nice ripply effect for you. Now, in those areas that you rippled, you can certainly create even more texturing by putting on a little bit of salt if you'd like to, which I just put on a very little bit just to create some light reflections in that water up there. Now we're gonna be doing the same thing down in this middle section. We're going to be doing some dry brushing not an overly amount, again, just here and there, because we wanna break up the smoothness. This is water, this is moving water. So you don't wanna have a really smooth, smooth surface. So I'm doing the same thing. I am creating my initial line. Now your initial line here, if you don't want it to be directly under your wave, you could have your initial dry brushing all the way down here if you would like. It does not have to be directly under your wave. What you would do though, is you would dry brush then up to your wave and dry brush down beyond where you began. And I'm gonna take that down again, about halfway. I'm lessening the intensity of the color by adding water to it so that it doesn't look quite as dark as when I started. And again, if you want to, if you wanna create just a little bit more texturing, because you can see what your texturing is doing up here with your salting. Can you see what that's happening with your salt? The same thing will be happening then if you throw a little bit of salt down here. So now we wanna give that salting just a little bit of time to work because if we don't do that, um, and if we try to take it off too soon, then the salt won't react and nothing will happen. So we're gonna give it just a minute or two to allow it to work a little bit. During that time, we're going to come down and we're gonna put a little bit of color to our birds. The birds are actually black, white, and tan. The white part is what I have misgitted out that will come on at the very end. The black part is going to come on after we put on the tan. You don't necessarily have to work from light to dark, but it's recommended because you can always 
layer over with a darker color. But once your dark colors are done, you can't layer over with a lighter color. Watercolor is transparent. It's not like um, an oil paint or an acrylic paint. It's all transparent. So you cannot put light over dark. You certainly can put dark over light. So we're going to mix a little bit of our burnt umber brown with a very tiny little bit of black and a lot of water to make a nice tan color. And then what we're going to do with that is we're going to paint the whole bird. Even if you forgot to misc it or if you didn't have misc it, it is still fine to paint your whole bird. So I'm painting my whole bird, not the legs, because the legs are just going to be black sticks and not the beak because the beaks are just going to be black sticks. But I'm painting in my whole bird. Even the ones that are right up next to each other, that's fine. We're not worrying about the reflections yet. This is just the actual birds because our reflections are going to be slightly lighter and our reflections are going to be a little bit less precise. Now the thing with water, your picture really doesn't start to look like much until you get the white froth in. And I can't stress that enough because so many people get discouraged when they're doing a picture with water or the ocean because they say that their pictures don't look right. They don't look realistic and then they get discouraged and they don't finish them. Well, I can tell you that your picture is not going to look like you want it to until you get your white froth in there. Not the big pieces that we left white because all they look like is like a long intestine and then cotton coming out of it. But until you put your white on, you're not going to be happy with it. Now there's a lot of artists out there that do not like to use white paint and that's their personal preference. But I find that by using white paint, it gives my pictures a much more realistic look than trying to leave everything white. So I have no problem whatsoever in putting in white paint. The only thing with white paint is, white paint is only going to show up well if you are dark around it. So you wanna make sure that any place that you are going to be putting on your whites, that you have a nice deep color around that. So in order for my nice deep coloring to help my white. I'm going to be putting my white here and here, and of course, along the edge of my water. So I am going to dry it one more time, brush off my salt, and I'm going to give my water one more wash of blue, just to make sure that I'm deep enough before I put my water, I mean, before I put my white on. 
I'm not going to repaint my shoreline. I don't really think I need to there because I don't have a lot of white down here except for the birds, but I do have a lot of white frothy lines in my water. So I'm gonna dry that one more time. And then we are going to put on another wash of our blue. Okay, I'm gonna hold this up again so that you can get a better idea of what your salting has done. So if you can see this, you can see right here, all of the texturing that your salt has done. Um, down here, some nice texturing where the salting uh, worked really well. That's what your salt will do for you. It's something that's great to show some uh, fine texturing, whether it be in uh, rocks or grass or dirt or water, but it does show um, a nice bit of texturing. So now I'm gonna use my same blues, not real dark because I already have blue on, but I'm gonna go ahead and put another wash on there just to make sure that when I put my whites on, they are going to show up really well. When you do this, just in case some of your uh, salting got a little bit out of hand and left markings that are too vibrant, this extra wash of color will go ahead and soften or tone that down a little bit. So it'll help. Now, if you feel that you don't want your water at darker, if you feel your water is dark enough, then by all means, leave it alone. You have to be the judge. And you're not going to get your lines exact on your waves, and that's okay too because your splatter later is going to take care of all of that. So I'm just repainting in my waves. Not exceptionally dark, but dark enough that my white will show up. Now, while you are nice and wet, because I am wet, I've filled everything back in. I've repainted so my surfaces are wet again. I'm going to go ahead and drag through with my finer brush a little bit of my dark color just to make it look as if there are some darker ripples of water out there coming in and it'll help to make my picture look more realistic that there's just not one big wave there there's more than one and especially up close to my horizon line i'm going to get just a little bit darker
Because as you look further out into the ocean, it gets darker because it's deeper. The water is deeper, so there's not as much light that can get in there. So of course it looks darker for you. The area between these two waves, you don't really have to put in that many lines of darkness because this is already coming into shore. So it's not going to have the deep, dark lines. You can have just a couple up close here to the big wave, but not as it's getting too close into the shoreline because then the water is much more shallow. So you're not going to see that nice dark color. All righty. Now, while that's all drying, we're going to go back down here to our birds and we want to paint in the brown reflections to these birds. So I'm using the same color, but I'm lessening the intensity of it just by adding some water to it. And I'm going to paint in the whole bird. I am not being real careful though. I don't need to get exact shapes. So if I go outside my line a little bit, it's perfectly fine because your reflections are in moving water. So sometimes your reflections look like they're moving. You want to make sure that you have as many reflections as you have birds. Now, some of the reflections might be hid behind a bird, that's okay, but you want to make sure that you can account for your reflections and your birds. You should have the same amount, unless it's hid. Okay, perfect. So now I have my reflections done and I have my birds painted in at least so far. And now I'm gonna to start to work with my white. As I had said to you at the very beginning, this doesn't look like anything to me until I get my nice fine water lines in. To me, this looks like a big worm that has a slit down the center and cotton's coming out the side. It's not realistic looking. It might be the way you paint. So this might be perfectly fine for you. But the way that I paint, I am much more detailed and I like my, um, all of my lines to be in place where they should be. So I'm gonna just begin a little bit with my white. I use Chinese white. And I always put my white in a separate container because I don't want my white to get contaminated with another color. I also don't want my white to contaminate another color because white paint, even though it's a watercolor, it is more opaque, not so much um, translucent. The more water you put to Chinese white, it will become more translucent, but it is more of an opaque paint. So I always keep my white watercolor paint separate. I'm going to start with my very fine rigger, my number one rigger, because I'm gonna put on my smallest lines first. Now the key with Chinese white, if you don't add enough pigment to the water, it will dry and it will look like Casper the ghost. You won't even see it. So the key to our Chinese white is, first of all, you want to just do a couple little lines of it 
so that you can see when it dries, if it's going to be dark enough. You don't wanna do half of your painting and then when it dries, realize, oh boy, it was way too light and you have to redo the whole thing. So we're just gonna put in a couple little lines to begin with to make sure that it's going to dry and it's going to be as um, opaque as we want it to be. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. So I'm going to start down here at my edge and I'm going to just be putting in back and forth lines, just like how the water comes up on the shore. And then I'm going to use my hair dryer real quickly just to make sure that this is how much intensity I need because I certainly do not want my paint to dry and me not be able to see it. So I'm gonna dry it real quick. And it looks as though it's dark enough that you'll be able to see it. So I know now that I've mixed it and I've put enough of the white pigment in that I'll be able to see it. So as I continue to paint with it, I'm painting small lines. These are like the ripple lines that are coming up on the beach. And I'm going all along the edge of these two little waves that are washing into shore. Same with the one in front of it. Now, do you see what I mean? How now your water really starts to look like water. Now I'm gonna move back to my first big wave because there's not a whole lot of froth on this nice smooth part that has just come in, but there is a lot of froth coming from this back in here. So I'm going along the top first. And I'm going to make it like it's jumping, like the water's really splashing. And I can dry brush by laying my brush on its side and then just pushing it up vertically. That'll give me some great splash. And I want to make sure that my edge down along the bottom is not a straight edge. I want it to be all uneven. So I'm using that paint to make it all uneven.
And if you're looking at your picture, you'll see that there's a lot of white frothy waves, the real shallow ones that are washing in behind this big wave. So I'm going to put those in now also. These are the nice, real shallow ones that come in nice and quiet and go out nice and quiet. And I'm just using my nice thin brush for that. Now, isn't this water just really coming alive now? Wait till you see it at the end, how it is going to just look so cool. Now you could go on with this for a very long time. It doesn't all have to be done at one time. You can come back to this tomorrow. You can come back to this next week. You can actually come back to something like this next year. It doesn't really matter because what you are creating with watercolor is translucent layering of color. So you can come back to it any time and add additional layers on. Again, you're not going to be able to add light over dark, but you can certainly, other than of course the white because it's opaque, but you can certainly continue to work on a painting for weeks at a time. It does not matter. If you wanna create a little bit of a flip over kind of wave with your brush, you're just going to lay your brush on its side, lay it flat on the paper and arch it to you. And that will create that nice little look of a wave that's starting to curl. Now we're gonna go back here on this big one. Same thing. We want to have a nice rough edge underneath here. And the reason we even left this white to begin with is you don't wanna to have to deal with having to paint in too much of your wave. So by leaving some of it white, we just helped so that we didn't have to try to, you know, paint in a big white area. We're painting in enough as it is. Going along the top now of this wave, same thing. I want it to be nice and rough. So I'm dry brushing along the edge there, laying my brush down and just pushing it vertically. We're gonna add splatter at the end also, but this is just the initial stuff, getting that wave to look like it's really rolling in and splattering.
You don't want your wave to be the exact same height the whole way across. So you wanna make sure that if you're splattering or you're adding some white, you can get it a little bit higher in spots. Okay, doesn't that look great? You can almost hear it coming in. And as I said, you can always go back in and add. So take your time because it's hard to take off but you can certainly go back in and add where you might feel you need some. Okay, so let's just let our white kind of settle in. We can add some additional things in a little bit, but right now we're gonna go back because we need to work on our birds, okay? So on my birds now, I have my whole tan body done. And I also have my reflections done. Now on your picture, if you look at your picture, you'll see that there is some black to these birds also. Their head is black and they also have some black on their wing. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna paint all of their heads, not the reflections, just the birds because the reflections are gonna be much lighter in color. Okay, I think that's all of them. And for my wing, I'm not gonna try to go and paint in specific wings. All I'm going to do is I'm taking my number two round now, my number two round, and I'm going to lay it where the wing should be. And I am just going to dry brush to the left. Just make it look like a furry wing or a feathery wing, not furry. I don't want to get that detailed. And they also have black tail feathers. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a couple of their black tail feathers. There we go. And now their legs. They all have skinny little black legs. And they're not real short. So you want to make them long enough.
Okay, perfect. I want to make sure everything is nice and dry on here. Now I'm going to go back and do the same thing to my reflections. The wing, the tail, and the legs. But they are not as intense as the actual bird. So I'm still going to be using my black, but I'm going to water it down. And I'm still going to paint my head. And you don't have to worry about it being perfect because like I said, your reflections are in water. So they are a little bit imperfect both in shape and um, with the color being muted simply because they are in water. So you're not getting that perfect realistic coloring. I'm gonna do the same thing for the wing. Now, <clears throat> If you can't work upside down, you can certainly turn your picture this way. If it's easier for you to do it that way to put the wing in, but you're just going to be dry brushing a little bit. Much lighter color. and their legs. Now, of course, their legs are much lighter also, and their legs come right at the edge of where you left off on the real legs, because their legs are down in the sand. So the reflection is coming directly from where you left off. Last but not least, we're going to put in the beaks. You want to use a little fine brush for the beaks. You don't want it to be, you don't want them to be big and fat. You want a nice thin, long beak. And the beak is a little bit long, and then it has a little bit of a turn down at the end. So we're doing a straight beak and a little bit of a turn down. And this is on the real bird, nice and dark. Okay, and then you're going to be doing the same thing on the reflections. However, they're going to be much lighter. Thank you. 
There we go. We're not done with the birds yet. We still have our shadows to go under the birds because not only are there reflections, but there are shadows. So we will put our shadows on first before we take our miscuit color or our miscuit off um, to kind of touch up the whites a little bit, okay? So we wanna make sure everything is nice and dry. Look at your waves. If you feel that you need some more froth on your waves, you wanna do that before the final touches. And the final touches will be to put in a little bit of dark color underneath some of the frothing, not all of it, but we wanna put a little bit of some dark blues under your frothing. So you wanna make sure that your frothing is finished. I can see that there are places in my froth that can be a little bit more intense in color. So I'm just going back in and redoing them. I told you before that your whites will dry um, lighter, less or more translucent. So you may have to do some another time and that is perfectly fine. Love this. You may wanna add a little bit of your white. You might wanna have a couple white caps up in your ocean. And again, you can do that just by laying your brush flat. and you'll get a couple of those little white caps. I wouldn't do too many, but you can put a couple back in there if you'd like. Make sure everything is nice and dry. If you did use Miskit, you're simply going to rub it off. It rubs off with your finger or with an eraser and you just rub it off. If you didn't use Miskit and you need to paint in your white on your bird, like on this one, then you just simply use your brush and we're going to paint in a little bit on his chest. And maybe a little bit on his back feathers. So you can certainly paint it in if you forgot and didn't have Miskit, or if you had Miskit and simply just forgot to put it on. That happens and it's not a problem because you can always fix that. So I'm gonna rub off my Miskit. You can't rub it off until you are totally done with your birds though, because once it's rubbed off, you don't wanna have to put it back on. And once it's rubbed off, you don't want to try to have to paint around anything. So you want to make sure everything is done. You're just going to rub it off. And then, of course, once it's rubbed off, you are left with your original white paper. So my original white paper, that's all well and good, but I don't think my birds are that nice and neat. So I am going to just dirty up the white slightly with my brush. I'll just use a little bit of some watered down black and I will just do a little stroke of dry brushing through some of that white, just so it's not so perfect, even though they think they're perfect. I'm dirtying it up slightly. There we go. Now we need to put in our shadows. Your shadows of your birds are going to be black, 
but they don't have to be real intense, but you want them to be intense enough that they are a little bit darker in intensity than the reflections in your sand. Your shadows on your birds come directly below your bird. So you want to start your shadow right where their feet touch the sand. Okay. And it's not a big circle because the shadows are not that big. It's more of a little bit, almost like a tadpole kind of shape where it's a little bit rounder under the belly, but then it goes out to a straighter line. And that's right under their feet. If there's a reflection in the sand, the shadow goes right over that. Remember now, you're only doing your shadows on your actual birds. You're not doing shadows on the reflections, just on the birds themselves. There you go. Now the very last thing that we want to do, this is always a fun thing to do, is we're going to splatter. We're going to splatter with our white. And you splatter with a fan brush. Okay, this is what a fan brush looks like. It looks like a fan. I like to use an oil paint fan not a watercolor fan, because a watercolor fan is too soft. An oil fan is a little bit firmer so that you can splatter better. So I'm using an oil fan. You don't have to get a real expensive one. You can get one for a dollar or two. And we are going to splatter with our white. Now the key to splattering, couple things. You want to hold your brush close to your paper so that you're not splattering everything, including yourself. You want to hold it down close to your paper. And I just use my finger like this. And I get that nice splatter. And you want your splatter just to be along the top there of your wave. You don't want it to be everywhere. So we're doing that a little bit on the bottom. And it doesn't have to be the whole way across. OK, you can have your splatter just in certain spots. But you want to make that splatter great, good and intense in white color. You can also splatter a little bit on this other frothy section down here. Okay. 
If there's any space or anything that you feel that you've missed, if you want to put on some additional white, if you want to put on some additional lines, you do not have to hurry and do it now. These paintings you can work on for weeks at a time. I mean, if you want to do it now, you certainly can, but you are not under a time restraint unless you're doing a commission for someone and they need it because it's a wedding gift and the wedding is tomorrow. Otherwise, you can take your time. You can work on these an hour at a time. No need to hurry, okay? If you think that some of your wave needs a little bit more color, that it's too white, you can add color to your wave, but you cannot add color where you already painted white. It won't show up as well because the white opaque paint will um, mix with your color and you won't get a nice color. So as long as you didn't put any white there, you can go ahead and add in some color, let it bleed around. You can throw some salt on there, it'll still work. And then once that's dry, you can brush off that extra salt and you're good to go. If there's a place on your painting that you think looks too clean or too smooth, you can dry brush in there. Or if you don't want to dry brush, if you're not a master dry brusher, you can put a light wash of color in there. Blend some of that color off just with some water so you don't have a hard edge. And then where your extra color is, you can throw a little bit of salt there and that'll give you some texturing. If you would rather dry brush it, then you can. Just put that little bit of color on your brush and you can go ahead in and dry brush. Do you wanna make sure everything is nice and dry? If you would rather paint in some little ripple lines, you can use your nice fine brush and you can go ahead in and paint in some extra lines. Less is always better. And the reason I say that is because you can always add. It's very difficult to take away. So do a little bit at a time. If you feel that you need more, you can add it in. But if you like it like it is, then leave it alone. Your gut will tell you if you've done enough. If you're not sure, put it away until the next day so that at the next day you can look at it and the next day you'll be looking at it with fresh eyes and you'll be able to tell whether or not you need something. Very last thing we're gonna do, and then we're gonna, we're gonna say we are done. I'm adding in a little bit of extra indigo color, dark indigo color under the biggest part of my wave. Nice and deep, not big thick lines. I'm just adding a little bit in down here around my white. And I'm going to blend it off just with my brush and plain water. Maybe a little bit over here. That's just showing you how much that wave has curled over. It's creating a shadow on the water in front of it. So it's just showing you how far that is coming over. If you wanna do a little bit on your other little wave, you can, 
but I would do really thin little lines there. I wouldn't make them real um, because this is not a big rollover wave. This is a smaller little wave, but it can still have a little bit of an effect by coming and creating a little bit of a shadow. Again, I wouldn't do it everywhere. You wanna pick out a couple spots to do it. And that's all you really need, okay? And then you are finished. You can sign it, dry it, and hang it. If you have any questions, my email is available. You can email me anytime for questions. I, I will answer questions for you anytime. Don't forget, once everything is nice and dry, you still need to add the little bit of white in your reflections. That's paler, but you wanna make sure everything is really dry and then you can go ahead in and put in your little bit of white. It can be much lighter in color because it is um, the reflection. So you're gonna do that nice and light, okay? And it's just along the bottom of the breast or the front of the chest. If you get a little bit too dark, you can lessen it by just going over it with a little bit of plain water. That's all you're gonna do. And then your birdies are done. There are other tutorials online, both through the library, or um, I have a whole series also of about 35 other different um, tutorials that are done the same way, step by step. But if you are not a member of the Monroeville Arts Council, or if you are not involved with the Monroeville Library, that's something that you should definitely look into because they offer wonderful programs all year long, not just watercolor painting. There's going to be all kind of different subjects that, um, you know, that you can take advantage of. Both organizations work very hard to put together things for you. So take advantage of them. Um, it was great having you join us tonight. We'll be here again next month in August, and then we'll be here again in September for another lesson. Next month, we're doing um, jars of tomatoes, so I can show you how to paint things that are in glass. Um, so I hope that you'll join us for that also. Have a good night.